everyone. Oh, can you guys confirm if you guys are hearing me? Okay. Oh, thanks for confirming that. I want to welcome everyone to my lecture today. Today, I'm actually going to be walking you through another exciting topic in statistics. And of course, this is actually going to be the concluding part of, you know, discrete probability distributions. And of course, um, we actually going to be focusing today on geometric and negative binomial distributions. Uh, before now, we actually, I went you to, uh, I think I walk you through what I call uh, different kinds of probability distribution for discrete random variable. I could remember I started with binomial distribution. And from binomial distribution, I moved to hypergeometric distribution. And from hypergeometric distribution, I moved to multivariate uh, hypergeometric distribution. And from multivariate hypergeometric distribution, I actually moved to multinomial distribution. And after that, I also uh, walk you through what we call Poisson distribution. Now, today, uh, the focus is actually going to be on geometric and negative binomial distribution. Of course, uh, the negative binomial distribution and the geometric distribution, I'm actually going to tell you situations under which they are, those distribution apply. Okay. Uh, and like I said, the outline for today, I'm actually going to focus on geometric distribution. I'm going to look also reveal, uh, I'm going to talk about, I mean, the negative binomial distribution. And of course, I'm actually going to walk you through examples. OK, so let us start with the geometric uh, distribution. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, in binomial, the geometric distribution is actually closely related to binomial experiments. And I'm actually going to, uh, you know, I'm going to provide a kind of background information uh, about uh, binomial distribution, and that will enable you to see the connection between uh, binomial and geometric distribution. Now you remember that uh, under binomial distribution, the binomial distribution is actually uh, a probability distribution for describing, uh, you know, binomial experiments, and of course, uh, binomial experiments is actually characterized by dichotomous outcome. And what do I mean by dichotomous outcome? You know, I'm trying to say that um, in binomial distribution, of course, there are two possible outcomes. Of course, uh, in, uh, which means, uh, uh, with, uh, you know, the, the, the outcomes, uh, you know, is more or less categorized. But you know what? In the um, geometric distribution, we are also dealing with a binomial experiment. We are also dealing with an experiment that uh, uh, that could have a two possible nature, but only that the interest uh, in uh, binomial distribution is just to be able to, uh, you know, if I have so many number of trials, okay, then the interest is, uh, uh, I'm interested in the first time I'm actually going to have sources. I got a good number of trials. And of course, uh, what is the probability of recording the first sources? I'm actually going to give you an example right now. Maybe uh, some of you, uh, maybe I, uh, there was a basketball game last night and um, maybe I'm trying to ask the students uh, those uh, who actually, uh, uh, those who who watch uh, the basketball game. Now, if I go to student number one, 
I'm actually going to ask a question. Do you watch a basketball game last night? Of course, the, the response could be yes or no. Okay. So let's say, for instance, I actually, uh, I go through the first five students and, um, you know, none of them, well, you know, watched the basketball game last night. And let us assume the characteristics of interest, uh, what I'm actually going to call the number of sources is actually, uh, I mean, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking for the first person how to, you know, that will tell me I watched the basketball game last night. So if I go from number one person who said no, number two person said no, number three person said no, and maybe number four person now say yes, then in that situation, it means I recorded for uh, sources at the fourth trial. So that is an example of a geometric distribution. So what geometric distribution is actually talking about is that if I have a given number of trials, then I'm looking for where I will actually record the first sources. Okay, that I'm looking for when I'm going to record the first uh, sources. Now, because, uh, because of that, if you take a look at this guy here, or oh, give me one second, if you take a look at this guy here, that is the probability distribution of a geometric. What is what is x? Of course, x is actually going to be the number of trials. What is p? P is actually going to be um, the probability, okay, associated well with that. And what is one minus p? The one minus p is q, okay, which is actually talking about you know the failure, okay. Now, uh, if I let me tell you something, p is the probability of success. Okay, P is the probability of success. Now, you're going to see that my, the range of X here does not start from zero. Okay, now, because if you plug in zero into that very, uh, into where we have the X minus one, of course, you're going to have, um, you know, uh, the probability of failure is going to raise to power negative one. And that is not going to be valid P, uh, PMF. And let me tell you this, the idea behind the geometric distribution it's just that there's possibility that if I try once, okay, if I try once, okay, I, before I can record sources, at least I need to try once. The number of trial has to be one for to record sources at all. So situation where X equal to one, okay, if X equal to one, if you record sources at that, okay, if you plug in the value, take a look at that. If you plug in the value, I'm actually going to have one is power that one minus one p, and of course this guy here is one minus p raised to power zero, so which means one minus p is q, which is the probability of failure. <gasps> Excuse me. So q raised to power zero p, so I'm actually going to have p, okay, and that very p will be that is the probability of sources, okay. So and that is the reason why if you take a look at this, our uh, x equal to one two three is actually going to go forever. It's going to go forever because we have seen, you know, there's, there's, there's a possibility that one could be trying and trying and trying and you don't record sources. Okay. And that is the reason why that is actually going to go forever. So now the, uh, the probability distribution for the geometric uh, is this guy here. So how will you just need to know what is going to be, what is, what does X represent? So X actually represent the number of uh, trials, okay? And the P is the probability of success and one minus P is actually gonna be probability of failure. And you know what? Um, do you know that uh, if you continue, if uh, some uh, the question people normally ask here is that how many times am I gonna try before I could record the first sources? I could remember um, years back, the United States of America was uh, uh, was not the uh, you know in terms of oil and gas production in the world. The United States of America was not on the list before, and you know what? The United States of America was you know doing some oil and gas exploration. You know they continue in the search and until the record uh, sources. And as I'm talking to you right now, 
uh, the United States of America is actually the highest producer of oil and gas in the entire universe, in the entire world. Okay, so uh, so now if you take a look at, uh, are you guys see here, enemy? Yeah. Okay, thanks for confirming that. Now, when you take a look at what I have right here, if I'm talking about geometrical distribution, now what is the average? Average, you know, the expected value of S. Of course, the expected value of S is more or less on average, you know, uh, you know, how many trial am I actually gonna have before I'm gonna record the four sources? And of course, that is actually gonna be one over P, okay? And what is your P? Your P is actually gonna be the probability of success. And of course, if I wanna get the variance for that one, this is what I'm actually gonna use. So uh, I wish you can also write as Q divided by P squared because our Q is one minus P, okay? So this is the variance associated with that. Of course, you know, every probability distribution I've been giving you the mean and variance for them. So what I'm trying to show you right now are the mean and variance of a geometric distribution. And of course, if you're given a probability question, you need to be able to identify, uh, you need to be able to understand the question for you to be able to know whether what you're gonna apply is geometric. And what you just need to look out for in a question is probably they are talking about uh, you know, giving a certain number of trials and if they recorded, if, uh, talk about recording the first sources, of course, you are referring to geometric distribution. Okay, now if that is uh, taken, then I'm actually gonna move to an example right now. Now take a look at what I have right here, the probability of a successful optical alignment, okay? In the assembly of an optical data story product is 0.8. Assuming that trials are independent, of course, one of the requirements of a geometric distribution is that trials have to be independent, just like what we have in the binomial. Okay, now what is the probability that the first successful alignment require exactly four trials? So a question like this, a question of geometry, because take a look at that, first successful. Anytime we're talking about first, look at that, first, first, first success. That is geometric. If you use any other distribution to figure out how you're actually gonna be wrong, okay? Now, take a look at the first one, he said, what is the probability that the first successful alignment require exactly four trials? That means X equal to four. Now, let me tell you the difference between this and binomial. In binomial, X is not the number of trials. In binomial, N is the number of trials. But in geometry, the number of trial is X. And in the binomial, X represents the number of sources. But right here in geometric X represents the number of trials. Okay, so I wanted to take note of that. Now, if I want to solve this problem right now, actually, you're going to say that, uh, you know, I'm going to denote my X as the number of trials, just like what I said. Okay, now X denotes the number of trials. You can see that now. So if the X, uh, you know, denote the number of trials to obtain in the first successful alignment, of course, uh, if I want to find what is the probability that it's actually going to take four number of trials or at most four number of trials or at least four number of trials, this is what you're going to do. Like I said, take a look at this, what am I applying right now? Of course, the formula actually is the probability of a big S equal to small X, which is uh, one minus P raised to power X minus one, then P, okay? So what did I plug in here? Of course, I plug in S equal to four. I plug in S equal to four, and I plug in the probability of a successful trial given that is 0 0.8, and that actually uh, give me the first one, okay? And then if you look at the uh, second question, if you take a look at what is done right here, I'm actually talking about at most, four trials and when i'm talking if you take a look at the question right here you know at most four actually means uh 
you know, I'm actually going to consider one to four. Okay. I'm actually going to, you know, consider one to four. Okay. At most four, we mean uh, I'm going to consider when x equal to one, when x equal to two, when x equal to three, and when x equal to four. I'm actually going to be plugging that into the geometric formula, of course. And whatever I get, I'm actually going to add all of that together. Okay. I'm going to add all of that together. And that's exactly what I did. It means I follow first fine using the geometric formula. I follow first obtain well, the probability of x equal to 1. And after that, I obtain the probability of x equal to 2. Still using the geometric formula. Then I obtain the probability of x equal to 3, x equal to 4. Then I had that together. That was what I did to arrive at 0.9984. Now, the other one that is talking about at least, of course, uh, the mathematical way to, you know, to represent at least is this guy here. You know, when you say at least four, at least four is actually going to be four and above. Okay. And of course, uh, if I use a uh, probability of S equal to four or plus probability of S equal to five, and I continue to go like that, I'm actually going to go forever. I'm actually going to go forever because uh, S, can, S can start from 1 to infinity. Therefore, to be at the server side, what I'm actually going to do, uh, I'm going to do, you know, the probability of X greater or equal to A plus the probability of X less than A is equal to 1. This, you know, I'm actually going to use this, okay, uh, because uh, S greater than A and X less than A are mutually exclusive. Okay, so uh, if it, an A in this case is four, okay? So, which means, and that is the reason why if I want to find the probability of uh, S greater or equal to four, then that is, I'm actually going to find, I'm going to do one minus the probability of the complement. Okay, so when you take a look at what I have uh, right now, and that is the reason why uh, if I want to get this guy now, I need to four of us obtain this guy, okay? And then the probability of X less than four, okay? When you take a look at probability of X less than four, it means I'm actually going to consider the probability of X equal to one, the probability of X equal to two, then plus probability of X equal to three, okay? So those are the values that are less than four. Now I'm going to use the geometric probability formula. Uh, you know, I'm going to compute when s equal to one, when s equal to two, when s equal to three, and I'm actually going to add that together and I'm going to subtract from one. When I subtract from one, of course, uh, that is what we have. Now, is there anyone who want to ask question? Uh, can you guys confirm if you guys are hearing me clearly? Yes. Okay. Now that is how you're going to handle that. So, like I said, when we are given any question, of course, you need to be able to look out. Uh, you know, um, they said there's something that you need to look out for. Okay. And of course, anytime they mention uh, the for, the probability of uh, you know recording first sources. Okay. Given a certain number of trials, of course, uh, you are actually going to apply geometric. Okay, so uh, from geometric right now, I'm going to go to example two. Now I'm still on geometric uh, distribution. Now take a look at this example right now. Assuming that each of your calls to a particular or to a popular radio station has a probability of 0 0.2 of connecting, that is of not obtaining a busy signal, calls are independent. Now, let me tell you something. Probably you want to contribute to a show. Maybe there's a, uh, there's a program going on on a radio. Oh, okay, and uh, probably you want to participate. And then um, it's a funny program. You actually want to make it, you want to call. But you know what? You are not going to be the only person that will be calling. There's a lot of people that are listening to the program that may also want to call. And because of that, uh, you may actually have, uh, you know, issue you know, your, your phone may have a in connecting, okay? So which means, uh, uh, now what is the probability that your first call that connects, okay, is your 10th call? This is an example of geometric. 
Maybe you call the first time, it was it did not connect. You call the second time, it did not connect. On the ninth time, it did not connect, and uh, probably it connects at the tenth call. Okay, so if you want to figure this out, of course you're actually going to apply the knowledge of geometric distribution. It has actually happened to me before. I wanted to contribute. Uh, oh, somebody said it happens to me all the time. <laughs> You know, if that happens to you all the time, you know, you, you now justify the reason why uh, X has to start from one, two, three, and, you know, to infinity. Uh, I'm so sorry that you, are, you, you witnessed that kind of, uh, you know, situation, you know, that's not what I mean. But don't worry, one day your call will connect, okay? So uh, all what I'm trying to say, you know, this is part of the world, you know, it's part of what we experience, okay, in this world, okay? Now... Take a look at the second question. What is the probability that it requires more than five calls for you to connect? And of course, what is the mean number of calls needed to connect? I, I think what we're going to be looking for is basically, if I uh, what is going to be on, on average, on average, how many calls am I going to, you know, uh, uh, attempt, okay, before my you know, before my call could be connected, how many calls? You know, we can also figure that out, and that is what we mean by the main numbers of calls needed to connect. Okay, so so that if I know on average, if on average is four calls, then if I if I call in the, uh, the first time and if if it did not if it did not connect, I'm not going to be worried about that. Second time does not connect, I'm not going to be worried because I know maybe it takes like four calls before it could connect. <laughs> and of course, if you take a look at the probability right here, it's very, very small, 0 0.02. That's like two out of 100. Okay, so like I said, you're going to apply geometric formula. That's what I'm applying right now. And if you want to answer my question, if you want to answer a question like this in the exam, you actually need to for first define your random variable x. Your random variable x right here is actually the number of calls needed to obtain a connection. Okay? The number of calls needed to obtain a connection. Then, of course, uh, if that happens, then s is actually going to be a geometric random variable. Of course, with the probability 0 0.02. Okay, so uh, if you take a look at the first question, we are asked to find the probability that your first call connects, okay, uh, at the 10th attempt, okay? Of course, it means your probability, your S equal to 10. Then you just need to use the formula that I used the other time, which is uh, this equal to that, which is actually uh, 1 minus uh, P raised to power X minus 1, then P. That's what you're going to use. Now you identify your P, you know, your P has been given to be 0 0.02. And of course your X equal to 10. All what you need to do is just to plug in the values. And when you plug in the values, you do your computation. You are done. Take a look at that. You're going to get a 0 0.0167. Okay. Now, uh, the next one is asking you to find uh, the probability of more than five cores. Okay. And of course, uh, more than five cores, you know, you're going to do X equal to six, X equal to seven to infinity. That's going to take forever. Now, because of that, you know, if you want to find the probability of X greater than five, then you can do one minus the probability of X less than five. And of course, X less, X less than five is the same thing as X less or equal to four, which means you're actually going to consider one to four. And that is why I'm considering one to four right here. You're going to plug in S equal to one. You're going to plug in S equal to two. You're going to plug in S equal to three. You're going to plug in S equal to four. And of course, if you compute the probability on that, you're going to add that and you're going to subtract from one. Then you get your results. Take a look at that. Uh, that is how. Uh, 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 are you guys still hearing me clearly? Are you guys still here? Okay. I, I can see that some people are leaving the lecture. I want to know what is happening, why people are leaving. 
because I've seen like four people leaving the lecture now, and um, I don't know why uh, they are leaving the lecture now. So uh, is there, oh, okay, somebody said, I think somebody has already, uh, so if you have any concern, please let me know, okay? And of course, if you want to ask questions, you can actually um, reach out to me. You can actually tell me right now, okay? Now, uh, before I continue, I need you guys to comment if you understand what I've explained so far. Now, you can comment yes. If you don't understand, you comment no. Okay, I've only seen one yes, okay, two yes. Oh, okay, I'm super excited. So, which means you, you guys are really getting the message right now. Now, um, the next thing that we want to do, so based on what we are finding right now, oh, somebody said yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Okay, so um, if I want to find the probability, I mean, if I want to find the average number of calls, that are actually going to make before you could get connected. Of course, so uh, expected value of X is going to be one over P. Okay, it's going to be one over P. So, and that is why, of course, uh, I'm using that. You know, one divided by P. My P is zero point zero two, and of course, uh, in this situation, uh, it means you need to make fifty calls. Okay. Now, this now confirm what somebody told me right now, you know, what I got in the chat when somebody said uh, or that happened to uh, him or her all the time. Because the reason why the number, the, the, the average is so huge is because of the fact that the probability of connecting is very, very small. When the probability that is actually going to connect is very, very small, then it is expected that you're actually going to have a huge number of uh, trials. But you know what? Is the probability of connecting is, uh, is large, then of course, the expected uh, number of uh, trials needed to land on the first success will not be huge. Okay? So that is the reason why uh, this is happening. Of course, uh, so that is that on the geometry. Okay, so um, yeah, somebody said, I don't know, uh, let me read my chat right now. Uh, I don't know whether the person is talking to me. Uh, somebody said, uh, okay, somebody said, uh, for probability of S greater than five, for uh, greater than five, why is it uh, one minus the probability of X less than five. Now, let me tell you this. When it is probability of X greater than five, okay, uh, uh, you actually, oh, let me, let, me, let me see that. Oh, let me go back to the question. Oh, uh, let me see. I think you are making sense. Did they mention at least five or more than five? I'm gonna check right now. What is the probability that it requires more than five? Oh, you are right, because you are very right. I think I, uh, I think I interpreted this to be, uh, to be greater than five. There's a difference between this. You are right. There's a difference between this guy and this guy here. You are right. Now, if I want to do this guy here, I'm going to do one minus probability of X less or equal to five for this guy here, okay? If I want to do this guy here, I'm actually going you know, to, it's going to be one minus probability of uh, X less than five. Does that make sense to you now? The person that shot in the question. So which means what I actually answer right here is this guy here, a, a probability of X greater or equal to five, not more than five. Because for more than five, uh, I'm supposed to have done uh, this. This is what I'm supposed to do. So for, for more than five, I'm actually going to do, is go, uh, uh, this thing is going to, uh, you know, end up in X equal, I mean, the probability of X equal to five. You are right. Okay. So the person, that person should send a message to me for extra credits for observing that. Now, do you now know there's a difference between greater than five and greater or equal to five? I'm gonna say that again. 
what I did right here, what I did right here is greater or equal to five, which is the same thing as at least five. Okay, that was what I did. And of course, at least five, probability of S greater or equal to five will actually be equal to one minus the opposite. And of course, the opposite of greater or equal to five will be less than, and when I'm talking about that, that is gonna be the same thing as less or equal to four. That is gonna be from starting from one to four, and which is what I did right here. Okay, please, I want you to correct that. Okay, it's gonna be greater or equal to five. Okay, but for the greater than five, okay, for greater than five, what I'm gonna use for greater than five is gonna be this. Greater than five is gonna be one minus, what is the opposite of greater than five? It's gonna be less or equal to five. And in that situation, I'm actually gonna have uh, X equal to one, x equal to two, you know, until I get to x equal to five. So please make sure you correct, uh, you can correct that, okay? So that is a different between them, but you know what? I'm actually gonna correct my material, okay? And I, I'm gonna repost that. Thank you for that observation. Okay, so uh, is there anyone that has, also has question about the uh, now geometric distribution before I go into a uh, negative binomial distribution. Is there anyone? Is there anyone want to ask question about uh, geometric distribution before I go into negative binomial distribution? Is there anyone? Uh, are you guys see hearing me clearly? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for confirming that. Now, we are under negative binomial distribution right now. And let me tell you something. Negative binomial distribution is a generalization of geometric. Okay? It is a generalization, generalization of geometric. Okay? It's a generalization of geometric distribution. Okay, the negative binomial distribution is a generalization of geometric distribution. And let me tell you something. The geometric distribution is actually gonna say, uh, how many times am I how many times am I gonna try in life before I will record the first sources? But you know what? Negative binomial distribution which we say, how many times am I going to try in life before I'm actually going to record a good number of successes? Look at that. We're talking about having the first success in geometric, but right now we're talking about having a good number of successes. I used an example the other time. I said, okay, maybe I'm interested in investigating. Maybe that was a basketball game last night. And I actually want to investigate from the students, okay? I want to investigate from the students. Uh, I want to know those who actually, um, you know, went, you know, went to watch the basketball game. And I asked from the first student, the first student, I said, okay, did you go to the basketball game last night? And the, and the person said no. The second person said no. The third person said no. And maybe the fifth person now said yes. And I started having yes, 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 okay? After having the first yes, I started having yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's a negative binomial distribution. Okay, it's just like somebody that is uh, into, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm going to use uh, this an example right now. Uh, my wife is into um, a cream formulation or the organic one, and. Um, you know, she tried a lot of time to be able to record sources, as in recording sources in cream formulation is just that, uh, what is the combination of cream? Or how many times am I gonna put something together before I'm gonna record sources, the first sources. Like the first sources there is the cream that will actually work on somebody's body. 
And of course, we, you know, maybe he tried to do that for three for three months. If she did not see result, and if she was able to get result at the fourth month, then it means uh, the first time she got the result is at the fourth month. That's a geometric. And maybe after the fourth month, she started recording sources, you know, a lot of sources upon sources. Then we're talking about negative binomial distribution. Okay, and that was the reason why I said negative binomial distribution is a generalization of a geometric uh, distribution. Now let us see how it's going to work. Now take a look at that. Now uh, this is the probability, this, uh, you know, distribution for negative binomial. You know, don't forget we are still, uh, you know, we are still performing a binomial experiment. Okay, that could result in either success or failure. Okay, and you know what, from trial to trial, okay, and then if you record, you know, uh, after so many trials, you now started recording a good number of sources, then we are talking about, you know, negative binomial distribution. And you know what, if you take a look at what I have here, if R equal to one, if R equal to one, you are actually gonna end up in geometric. Okay, now let us try that. Let us try that and see plug in one, okay? X minus one, you know, combination. You know, when you plug in uh, one, there's actually gonna be zero, okay? And you're actually gonna have one minus P raised to power X minus one, then P. And any two combination zero is one. What are you having now? You're having F of X equal one minus P raised to power X minus one P, which is the geometric, that is geometric distribution. So when, when the number of sources equal to one, that is the first sources, talking about first sources, first sources means R equal to one. First sources means R equal to one. And R equal to one in the negative binomial, that would take you back to geometric distribution. And that was the reason why I said, you know, uh, the generalization of a geometric distribution is a negative binomial distribution. Okay, so if I now want to find the mean, of course, this is going to be the formula to find the mean. And don't forget the formula for finding the mean in geometric is one over P. That is R equal to one. I told you, when R equal to one, you're actually talking about geometric. And R equal to one means we're talking about the first sources. Okay, and if R is not one, okay, Maybe you've had a first success, if you have had a success before you are now having another kind of success, then of course, R is going to be greater than one. And, and of course, this is the variance. Can you see that now? Okay, so uh, having know that, then let us now go into an example right now. Take a look at what I have right now. Suppose that X is a negative binomial random variable with P equal to 0 0.2 and R equal to four. Okay, determine the following. Expect the value of x, the probability of x equal to 20, the probability of x equal to 19, and the probability of x equal to 21. Okay? Of course, if you want to find the mean, look at that. It's just the ratio of r to p. Okay, your r equal to 4 and p equal to 0 0.2, then it means you're actually going to get 20. Okay? It means for you to have that success, of course, uh, you must have had 20 trials. Okay? Now, when you take a look at when S equal to 20, okay, I'm just going to use this formula right here. I'm actually going to plug in S equal to 20 and R equal to 4. Then I do all that, and that is going to give me the result. That's what I'm going to have. Okay? When S equal to 19, you do the same. When S equal to 21, you do the same. Okay? Now, if you take a look at this example now, you are told right? You are told that this follows a negative binomial distribution. What of in a question where you are not told? How are you going to identify, you know, a question to be negative binomial? I'm going to show you right now. Now, take a look at this exercise. I want to have like, you know, I'm putting exercise one, exercise two, exercise three, you know, and I'm going to explain each of that. Now, take a look at the first one. Uh, the, the probability that a person living in a certain city owns a dog is estimated to be 0 0.3, okay? 
you know, 0 0.3 here means like probably the 30% of people in that city actually have a dog. And that's why the probability of, you know, having a dog, a person having a dog, is 0 0.3. Now find the probability that the 10th person randomly interviewed in that city is the fifth one to own a dog. Take a look at this question now. Find the probability that the 10th person randomly interview in that city is the fifth one to own a dog. Can somebody tell me for extra credit? What am I going to apply here? Is it going to be geometric or negative binomial? Can somebody tell me? Okay, somebody said negative binomial, another person said negative binomial. Is there anyone who have an objection to that? Somebody said geometric. Somebody said geometric, another person said negative binomial. Now, for somebody who said negative binomial, because I know this is gonna be between uh, whether negative binomial or geometric, but for you to have my extra credit right now, can you tell me the reason why you you believe this is going to be a negative binomial? Can somebody can you tell me? Why do you think it's going to be a negative binomial? Okay, somebody said x equal to 10, r equal to 5. Okay? The person that said uh x equal to 10, r equal to 5 is correct. Okay? And I'm actually going to tell you the reason why the person is correct. Okay, uh, 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 the person said s equal to 10, r equal to 5 is because, okay, uh, somebody said because you are looking, oh, let me let me read my chart. I think the chart is coming here right now. Uh, give me one second, I'm going to read my chart. Somebody said r equal to 5 because you are looking for the fifth person to hone a dog, not the first. Oh my goodness, that guy is going to have my extra credit. So which means that is not going to be the first person that we own a dog. I'm actually looking for the fifth person. Okay, it means one, two, three, four. I've already seen when I was interviewing, uh, you know, maybe I interview somebody, this one say, I don't have a dog, I got a dog, I don't have a dog, I got a dog. And you know what, before I get to the 10th person, I've already recorded four good number of successes. And that is going to be negative binomial. So that guy that put that, you know, that explained that to me, she sent a message to me. And uh, the person that said geometric, uh, I want to believe, do you now understand the way I explain it right now? Do you now understand why it is not geometric? Uh, you can chat with me. Do you now understand? Oh, okay, now I'm good right now. Okay, so in this question now, you're actually going to use negative Binomia, because of the fact they said, uh, you know, uh, the fifth person, you know, the fifth one to own a dog. It means uh, before the fifth person, the, the four people have already, they already have a dog. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the next uh, exercise right now. Now I pull out this exercise from the textbook. Okay. I pull out that from the textbook. Okay. Now you know you're going to use a negative binomia here. Now let's look at question two. Find the probability that a person flipping a coin gets A, the third head on the seventh flip, B, the fourth head on the fourth flip. Can somebody tell me? A and B, you're going to use a different distribution right here. What am I going to use for A? When I, what am I going to use for B? Can somebody tell me? So what, what distribution am I going to use for A? And what distribution am I going to use for B? Okay, somebody said for A, I'm going to use negative binomial. And somebody said for B, I'm going to use uh, geometric. Okay, you are right. Of course, I'm talking about first head. And that is going to be geometric. Okay, and for this guy here, I'm actually talking about third head. Okay, third head. Okay, so which means here, uh, you know, R equal to one here, and R equal to three right here. And of course the seven flip, X equal to seven here, and X equal to four here, okay? You can take a look at that now. 
And that is how that is done. Okay? You can see that now? So easy that way. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the last exercise of the day. Okay, take a look at the exercise of the day. I mean, the last exercise of the day. According to a study published by a group of University of Massachusetts, okay, sociologists, about two thirds of the 20 million person in this in in, uh, in this uh, country who take value on our women, okay, assuming this figure to be a valid estimate, find the probability that on a given day, on a given day, okay, the fifth, the fifth prescription written by a doctor for Valium is A, the, the, first, the first prescribing Valium for a woman and B, the third prescribing Valium for a woman. Of course, one is gonna be geometric, the other one is gonna, now take a look at the one where they mention first, take a look at that. And look at Todd, I told you, I told you, when you have when you have force there, that's going to be geometric. And anything other than Todd is actually going to be negative binomial. The only thing you just need to identify here, what is the probability? Of course, the probability we're told that two out of three, that is two Todd, right? Okay, take a look at that. And of course, uh, find the probability on a given day, the fifth prescription, fifth prescription that is x s equal to five okay that's that, that is prescription s equal to five then your r you know in, in a you're actually going to use geometric in b you're actually going to use negative binomial okay uh this is where i'm actually going to hand today uh on monday we're going to start uh, a new chapter and of course, that's the chapter is actually going to be um, uh, continuous probability distribution. Uh, is there anyone who want to ask question before I go today? Is there anyone who need more clarification? Now, somebody said when he says I'm two. Of course, uh, I need you to check the canvas. It's, uh, I think it's actually going to be November. Uh, give me one second. Yeah. No, uh, some, yeah, no, maybe probably November 17th. Check, check the canvas. But by next week, uh, we're actually gonna, maybe probably by Friday, we're actually gonna have, um, uh, what is it called? We're actually gonna have the preview. And I'm also gonna tell you uh, the chapters in the exam, uh, the, cha the chapters in the textbook that will be covered in the exam. Okay, so I will advise that you check the syllabus. Check the syllabus, you're going to see the exam date for me time too. Okay. So uh, is there anyone you want to ask question before I go today? Is there anyone? Uh, uh, can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah. Oh, you can hear me, right? So is there anyone who want to ask question Oh, hey, somebody says, someone asked something in the chat. Okay, I'm going to read the chat now. Let me take a look at the chat. No, uh, I, I, I didn't see any question. So if you want to ask question, you can go ahead, whether you can, you say that you talk or you put that in the chat. Now, uh, the, the, somebody said, if the variance of a random variable X or a variance of a random variable Y is infinity, can we still calculate the correlation between X and Y? Now, let me tell you something. If the, uh, what we are trying, uh, for variance to be infinity, then you are trying to say the variance is in, uh, indeterminate, okay? And let me tell you, there's no way. Variance must be determined, no? You, you, you can never have a situation whereby, uh, uh, unless you are using, uh, you know, uh, a wrong range for the values of X and Y, in your integration, okay? So we want a situation whereby a variance can be determined, okay? Because the moment it is infinity, what you're trying to tell me is that it is indeterminate, okay? So uh, of course, uh, for you to be able to have a correlation, of course, the variance must exist. Even, even, if, even for you not to, even whether to have a correlation or not to have correlation, variance must exist. Okay, the variance must exist. Uh, 
did you, did you get that now? Did you get that explanation now? Okay. So maybe you should try and look at, uh, you can revisit your range, the range of X and Y that you are using because the variance has to be determined. Okay. So uh, I want to thank everyone who have attended my lecture today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, until um, on Monday that I'm actually going you know, to come your way with another exciting topic in statistics. Uh, make sure you stay safe and have a night and, and have a lovely weekend. Oh, somebody said happy Halloween. Okay, happy Halloween too. Okay. Okay. So bye for now, guys. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.